Life Audio. On this episode of Encouragement for You, Dr. Rex Rogers of SAT7 discusses biblical stewardship and Christian life coach John Redd talks about resolving conflicts. Welcome to the Encouragement for You podcast, brought to you by Encouragement Communications in association with the Salem Web Network and is part of the Life Audio Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. In just a moment, your host, Don Hawkins, will introduce today's episode. First, a word from our sponsors. Miracles are everywhere. Let our adventure begin! Discover Pure Flix, your premium streaming service where faith and family values come home. Ready to have some fun? The most exclusive selection of quality, wholesome movies and series that will uplift your spirit. A man can argue whether God exists, but when he looks at his daughters, he knows. With new arrivals every week. Unbelievable. Save big and enjoy the possibilities, like invitations to exclusive theatrical screenings. I see it, so I believe it. Find out more by joining today at pureflix.com. Fall for New Jersey. Team up for adventures and natural wonders. From the Jersey Shore straight up to the Skylands, discover scenic parks and wineries. Root for your favorites from the gridiron to the greens. Discover performing arts and dining out, or just kick back and admire the trees. New Jersey has hundreds of destinations worth falling for. Find yours at visitnj.org. Dr. Rex Rogers is the president of SAT7, a ministry providing Christian content via satellite to the Middle East and North Africa. He is a prolific author and the former president of Cornerstone University. Here's Don Hawkins to introduce our discussion. The basic premise of stewardship is that one individual in the universe owns everything. Would that be correct? Indeed, that's the case. The sovereign God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, which is Scripture's poetic way of saying that he's the creator God and everything belongs to him. And of course, then he allows us to use it for a brief period of time. Deuteronomy 8 verses 17 and 18 talk about, remember that the Lord your God, he it is who gives you the power to produce wealth. Great reminder to the Israelites and to us today as well uh, that God owns everything. In fact, you uh, talked about a Christian philosopher popularizing a question from Ezekiel 33. How should we then live? I think you must have been talking about a gentleman from Labrie in Switzerland. Is that correct? Absolutely. Francis Schaeffer in 1976 published a book called How Shall We Then Live? And there was later a film series. But that question, I would suggest, is the second question that every human being should answer or be asked. One is, first one is, what think ye of Christ? What do you think yes. of the Messiah? And once you've understood who Jesus Christ is, well, then how shall we then live? How should yep. we live? And that's where stewardship and money and a lot of other things come in. Uh, Rex, you've talked about the fact that God owns everything. Uh, what all does that encompass? We obviously usually think of money, but I think it's more than that, correct? Well, I think so. Uh, if you embrace the idea of stewardship as taught in the Scripture, uh, often when people hear that term, they think just of money. But it's much broader than that, as God commissioned us to be responsible. He gave us talent. He gave us the world and natural resources. He made us responsible and accountable to use it all for his, our benefit and his glory. So that includes our time, how long we live, our talents. It includes relationships with others, the creation itself, the environment. That includes our knowledge, our learning, uh, the arts, everything that we own or have access to. And, of course, that includes our treasure, our money. Uh, you know, some people think that money is the root of all evil. Uh, but I suspect, Rex, that maybe they're not interpreting a verse correctly. Would that be true? Well, I think so. I mean, nowhere in scriptures does God say that money is evil. He doesn't say that debt is evil. But he warns us against the pursuit of money, making mm. it an idol in our life. Yeah. He warns us to not put it in a place where God should be. We can't serve two masters, cannot serve both God and money. 
And he tells us then how to use money properly, again, for our family's benefit and for his glory. A couple of principles here as we think about that. And again, a verse that's sometimes misquoted says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, not money itself. God doesn't condemn money. But as you say, there are a couple of things that are contrasted in Scripture. One is greed and the other one is generosity. Help us understand uh, the contrast between those two, if you will. So greed, of course, just is, you know, I told the story of the original John D. Rockefeller 100 and some years ago that started Standard Oil Company. He lived to be 98 years old. He developed a fortune of, in today's terms of about $39.5 billion with a B dollars. Hmm. Somebody asked him one time, Mr. Rockefeller, how much is enough? And he kind of smiled and said, one dime more. Uh, wow. And, uh, you know, that desire to have, it's built into all of us, not just him, that desire to have. But wealth, from the Scripture's perspective, is not ultimate, and greed can ruin us. The pursuit of money it says, don't wear yourself out, it says in Scripture to get rich and have the wisdom to show restraint. Cast but a glance at riches, and they're gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off in the sky like an eagle. You know, the old jokes, uh, and they're not, they're serious. There's no U-Hauls going into cemeteries. We don't take anything with us, and we depart this world, and all of our plans, it says in the book of Proverbs, stop that day. And all of our assets, insofar as we have whatever, a little or a lot, then somebody else is going to end up with them. And if we've lived our life just for that, what have we lived our life for? Uh, What does the Bible tell us about debt? I think this is another area, Rex, where sometimes uh, we can be uh, misled one direction or the other. Well, again, in the book of Proverbs, it says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. Now, it doesn't say debt is evil. A lot of us have debts like mortgage on our home. It's It's a transactional thing in the sense that there's equity. But there's certainly irresponsible and uh, debt, bad debt, uh, debt beyond our means. Yeah. And we've got to be careful then uh, how much debt, what kind of debt, and to whom do we owe it. Uh, let's talk about the physically poor and needy because Scripture talks about those people uh, and our responsibility toward them. Well, that's one of the things about debt. Again, if we're so upside down and sideways with our own accounts that we're deeply in debt, we can't. we don't have any money. We're not even left to be generous, and at least not as much as we should have. And the Scripture says, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. It is a sin to despise one's neighbor, but be, but blessed is the one who is kind to the needy. That's, again, out of the book of Proverbs, a lot in Proverbs about a wisdom and dealing with financial references and matters. Yeah. So, yes, God wants us to be generous. We're responsible to be generous. We're responsible also in the New Testament to be what's called a cheerful giver. Uh, Rex, I do hear people from time to time say, well, uh, isn't tithing all we're supposed to do? Doesn't God own 10 percent of it? And am I not responsible for the other 90 percent? How do you respond to that? Well, I think, again, God wants a, a generous giver. He wants a cheerful giver. I think that number is just one of the numbers that's used in Scripture, and there are different Bible scholars that said, look, if you take into account other verses, it's a lot bigger number than that 10% no. that's stuck in our head. But beside that is just the fact that we are to live our lives as unto the Lord. Yeah. And whatever we eat or drink or whatever we do, we do for the glory of God, and that means to become more generous. And as we become more generous, God does bless our lives. He says so in Scriptures, and He'll provide for us. Well, we have a little or a lot. You want your father's advice. You can't afford not to. And that was something I had to learn as a young man, even though I was taught well as a child. I still had to learn it when I was out on my own. I think all of us, to some degree, have to learn that. And again, it's a very important lesson to learn. Sometimes we learn it through hardship, you know. Uh, It may be that we go through adversity, and maybe we haven't been as generous as we could. And and, uh, maybe as a result of going through hard times, God teaches us. Sometimes God will uh, do some very surprising things when we make a commitment to say, uh, as the Scripture says, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. And to me, I think that means if we have money in the bank, we're to honor God with that. Uh, If we have an income coming in, however we're getting that income, we're to honor God with that. Uh, Would you see it that way? Well, certainly as a guy who's now a little older, 
I sometimes say that if you have an experience as a believer, the provision of God, that God provides, you probably haven't lived long enough, okay? <laughs> you live a little longer, you're going to face some kind of problem, and you will see, and I have stories of my own from my own family, how God has provided, especially when we were younger, things happen, furnace goes out, all those kind of things, and God provides, and He is faithful, and He will take care of us. I sincerely believe God will provide if you look to Him. We'll be back with more right after this. Who'd like another slice of free turkey? I'd love a slice of free turkey. White meat, please. Where'd you get this delicious free turkey? BJ's Wholesale Club. It's a free butterball turkey. Free drumstick, anyone? I want a wing. Are the wings free? The whole turkey is free. Get a free butterball at BJ's when you spend $150 in one transaction in club or on BJ's.com between November 1st and the 10th. Your free coupon will appear in BJ's digital coupon gallery beginning November 12th. BJ's. Absurdly simple savings. Go to BJ's.com slash free turkey for details. Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino online. I was only playing for fun, so winning was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's favorite free online social casino. You too could have the chance to win life-changing cash prizes. Absolutely anybody could be like Mary. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumboCasino.com and play for free now. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of the winner. John Red is a certified Christian life coach who works with the Hope Speaks Clinic of Dallas, Texas. He provides biblically based help regarding relationships. Here's encouragement for you host Don Hawkins to begin this conversation. I am Don Hawkins, and I'm so glad to have John Red back in the studio with me. Thanks, Don. It's good to be here again. John, why in the world do we have so many relationship problems? Oh, goodness. That's <laughs> that's the $64,000 question. It, and honestly, Don, it sort of boils down to our own self-interest. Yeah. It really does. It, mm -hmm. Our self-focus, our self-interest causes us to not relate up to others well. Because we're looking at us. Looking out for our own interest. Yes. And I think that goes back to the Garden of Eden where a three-letter word entered the vocabulary, mm. and the middle letter of that word was I. I. Sin. Sin entered the world, and uh, Satan came along in the form of a serpent and said to Eve, you know, you can be like God, knowing good and evil, and your self-interest will be way ahead if you'll just take a bite of that forbidden fruit and... We know the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. Right. <laughs> and lo and behold, in the next generation, the firstborn generation, what happened? Mm, yeah, brother killed brother. Yeah, Cain killed Abel, and people have been killing each other ever since. So what would be the number one problem or hindrance to, a, say, a satisfying marriage or, for that matter, a friendship or other relationship? It's really developing that openness of communication and understanding that if I put someone else's interests ahead of my own to try to serve them, then that will help us to focus on what's the best for the other person and for the relationship. So, so to some degree, we have to be able to get past I and maybe go to the plural we. Mm, that's a good and one. And maybe that will get us in the right direction. You and I were talking before we started about a passage in James mm -hmm. that relates to this whole area of relationships and conflict. We were. Take yeah. us there, if you will. Yeah, James says, he says this, what causes quarrels among you? What causes the fights among you isn't that you focus on the passions that are at war within you. You have desires, but you don't get them. Hmm. Yeah. And so we'd murder with our voice, with our actions. Yeah, we talked about Cain killing That's Abel. Right. Uh, the human history has been filled with that. But again, frequently most of us don't commit actual murder. Uh, but Jesus said, if you hate somebody in your heart, you're That's guilty of murder. That's right. So a lot to think about there. A lot of conflicts. Uh, but the key to resolution to this might be another scripture, one that Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 18. Yeah, love your neighbor. 
love your neighbor yeah. as yourself. And there he said, if you have a beef with your neighbor, a conflict, go, go to your neighbor, confront your neighbor lovingly mm -hmm. and uh, hash it out, get it done. One of the major skills is listening. Mm -hmm. And Jesus did a lot of listening, you yes, know, to people. He did. He listened with compassion. Yeah. And he asked cultivating questions. Mm -hmm. He really, in fact, it just amazes me. I was reading a passage just this morning from Luke's gospel, and, and Jesus was asked a question, and he literally turned around and threw the question back uh, to those that were asking him the question. And, and so many times, uh, it seems like with a life coach, that's probably one of the best things to do. It is. A lot of times people will ask us a question about what do we think about something, and if we will turn that around and ask them a probing question, a lot of times it will unlock within them their own answer. You know, these past couple of years with uh, coronavirus and uh, people uh, sheltering in place and that sort of thing, have added some significant stresses. Do you think that's added to the conflict challenges people have had? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think as we became more and more isolated because of the protocols, we became, just without even thinking about it, more, more self-focused. Yeah. Makes sense that we would do that. In reality, uh, we've sort of had to get readjusted to getting out from behind the masks. By the way, uh, masks and communication, do those really go very well together? No, no not at I all. I didn't think so. Uh, that was kind of my opinion, that they don't really work too well at all. But in reality, well, they were sort of a necessity. Mm -hmm. And thank God for the progress that has been made. And uh, very interesting as we think about uh, the whole issue of conflict and communication and sometimes hearing issues are a problem. Sometimes we're in a crowd and maybe we think we heard somebody say something and maybe they didn't say that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to ask a clarifying question. Do you recommend that? I do. A lot of times, like you said, we, we are in a situation where we maybe physically can't hear, but sometimes we're in a mental place where we can't hear the other person. Yeah, because we're thinking about maybe our own agendas. Oh, now that we're back to that same problem, that sin problem, that selfishness problem, that I problem that's right in the middle of everything. And uh, pride it factors into that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we really honor people when we listen to them, yes, right? Yes, we do. So important. I came across something literally this morning. Uh, and this is from James Dobson, probably one of the premier authorities on family communications. Mm -hmm. And he writes this, years ago, I went through a very hectic period in my life professionally. I was a full-time professor in a medical school, but I was also traveling and speaking. I completely exhausted myself during that time. It was a dumb thing to do, been there, done that. But I'd made commitments that I simply had to keep. Finally, on a concluding Friday night, I came dragging home. I'd earned a day off, and I planned to kick back and watch the USC-Alabama football game that Saturday. I can relate to that. And my wife Shirley, on the other hand, also felt she had paid her dues. For six weeks, she'd taken care of the kids and run the home. It was entirely reasonable that I spend my Saturday doing the things that she wanted done, the honeydews right. around the house. Neither of us was really wrong, but the two ideas were incompatible. Okay. Those assumptions collided about 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning when Shirley asked me to clean the backyard umbrella. I had no intention of doing it. Well, this is James Dobson, okay? There was an exchange of harsh words that froze our relationship for three days. It's important to understand that neither of us was looking for a fight, but we both felt misunderstood and wounded by the other. Our conflict was typical of what goes on every day in a million other homes. Would you agree? I agree. 100%. Yes. Now, here's what he concluded. Dr. Dobson says, It all comes down not to deliberate antagonism, but to something called differing assumptions, differing assumptions. Could you uh, unpack that a little bit for us, John? Yeah, differing assumptions is, is really a, another way to say expectations. Yeah. We, we have expectations or assumptions of other people and what they are, we think they should do or what they're thinking. And when they don't measure up to that or don't do what we think they should do, it 
can upset us. Hmm. Yeah. But one of the problems is, and I think it's in this situation with James, was they didn't communicate what their expectations were ahead of time. Yeah. So uh, James Dobson, Shirley Dobson, both had expectations. Obviously, books had been written by the person in question about how to communicate in a marriage. Good reminder for those of us who are pastors, those of us who are preachers, those of us who are Christian life coaches. You know, it's interesting that passage in James says, and this is in chapter three, in many things we all offend. So nobody's perfect. That's right. And then he goes on to say, yeah, and a lot of that is offending with the tongue. And he uses a couple of metaphors there, and I think this is relative to communication and, and conflict resolution, John. Uh, he talks about the tongue is like a rudder of a ship. You know, you've got a huge ship, an oil tanker, whatever, and it has a little rudder, relatively small, that steers the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And he says the tongue is like that. Some people react in different ways to conflict. Not everybody reacts the same way. They don't, and, and it's interesting because it's, there's so many facets involved with why people respond the way they do. Mm -hmm. Background, culture, um, issues, in their, you know, problems from their previous, their early life, or whatever it might be, yeah. have caused them to be programmed to respond in a certain way. Talk about uh, issues in blended families where there's been a previous marriage and uh, maybe there's a Brady Bunch kind of children, his, hers, and theirs. Uh, you've probably seen some of that in your Christian coaching career. Oh, yes, yeah. And it's, it's important for these families to, to realize and I think and to recognize that the blendedness is a beautiful thing, but it, can all, it also comes with some, some inherent issues with regards to um, position and, and, and relationships with regards to the children, especially yeah. that yours, mine, and ours mm -hmm. is not always ours. It's sometimes yours and mine. Oh, yes. And uh, is the goal to work toward ours or just peaceful coexistence? Well, I think we need to work towards ours. Oh, very good to get that kind of insight. Uh, uh, what do you, advice do you have for the husband or the wife who says if he would just change, if she <laughs> would just do things differently? You know, that's a question I've heard over and over, and I'm sure you have as well, yeah. Don, is, is it's looking at the other person. And, and I guess in, in my own older years, I've kind of become a little more blunt. I'm like, well, let's take a step back. What do we need to look at? What do you need to look at instead of saying, how can they change? Maybe it's how I perceive things. How do I need to change in order to have a more healthy, effective relationship? And a lot of that comes down to perception because we all look at things differently, do we, do. we not? We do. Yeah. Big challenge there. Let me come back to this whole issue of different reactions. Some people uh, lash out. I mean, they blow up. And then some people clam up. Mm -hmm. They withdraw. They pull back. And, and typically in a marriage, both people don't react the same way. For some reason, opposites attract, would you say? Yes, definitely. Okay. So how do you work through that? Well, I think it's First of all, is to recognize how you are, you are responding and to get to the root of it, whether you're lashing out or whether you're shutting down, is to, to know that neither one of those are going to help the relationship to grow, hmm. to yeah. recognize that, and then to work on that to figure out what it is that's causing that particular root of communication. Is that where a person maybe needs to sit down with a third party, maybe a pastoral counselor, a Christian life coach, a Christian counselor? Absolutely. Having that third party perspective can sure bring in a lot of clarity. Yeah. And it's amazing the difference that can make. Now, here's, here's another issue that some couple or individual might say to you. There's just too much conflict in our relationship, John. There is no hope. Mm. Uh, when people get to the point where they feel like they've lost hope, we ha have to redirect them to where their real hope is first. Yeah. Hope in Christ. Yeah. We have to direct them there because if that is hope lost, then everything else is going to fall short. Thank you for listening to this episode of Encouragement for You with Don Hawkins host of Encouragement Live Radio and author of over 25 books, including Never Give Up and Master Discipleship Today. You can find more about Don and his books at encouragementlive.org. Encouragement for You is a production of Encouragement Communications with the Salem Web Network and lifeaudio.com. 
Editing by Phil Gebers. Production by Elizabeth Andrade. If you enjoyed what you heard today, we'd love for you to head over to your favorite podcast app and leave us a review. It really does help people find us. Let me take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on Encouragement for You. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Stay encouraged and join us next time for Encouragement for You. Miracles are everywhere. Let our adventure begin! Discover Pure Flix, your premium streaming service where faith and family values come home. Ready to have some fun? The most exclusive selection of quality, wholesome movies and series that will uplift your spirit. A man can argue whether God exists, but when he looks at his daughters, he knows. With new arrivals every week. Unbelievable. Save big and enjoy the possibilities, like invitations to exclusive theatrical screenings. I see it, so I believe it. Find out more by joining today at pureflix.com. Who'd like another slice of free turkey? I'd love a slice of free turkey. White meat, please. Where'd you get this delicious free turkey? BJ's Wholesale Club. It's a free butterball turkey. Free drumstick, anyone? I want a wing. Are the wings free? The whole turkey is free. Get a free butterball at BJ's when you spend $150 in one transaction in club or on BJ's.com between November 1st and the 10th. Your free coupon will appear in BJ's digital coupon gallery beginning November 12th. BJ's. Absurdly simple savings. Go to BJ's.com slash free turkey for details.